tired of playing small and feeling like you don't matter? I'm Natasha, and I'm here to help you absolutely love being who you are. Join me to let our true selves free and be guided by our intuitive feminine wisdom. Hello there, here's Natasha Q, and welcome to another episode at the Feminine Space Podcast. So we are on the fourth episode of the Being Me and Loving It series. And I've been really inspired by the ladies in the Feminine Space Facebook community. If you're not there, just head over to FeminineTribe.com. But there's been a lot of conversation about what do you truly want for yourself? When you're diving into self-love and self-care, what is the greater purpose? And what is it all for? And I was just received with so much desire to authentically express all the amazing qualities of the ladies within the group. And I could already feel them, that shining quality, that shining essence within them, wishing and yearning to be unleashed and to be seen and to be spread into this world. So I was inspired to make a Facebook Live as usual, my free trainings within the group. And this time I was really inspired to share how sometimes we can have a really solid spiritual practice. We can be taking all the steps that have worked for us before and we're doing it every day. We're doing our yoga, we're eating clean and vegetarian or vegan. We have our meditation. We have, you know, all these resources that surround us. But at the same time, I see all these ladies, despite all that they're doing, pretty much every single thing that they know and can do for themselves, they're already doing. Yet, there seems to be a huge disconnection still between what they truly want and where they're at right now. So I want to dedicate this whole episode right here, right now, to share with you what I really feel is going on. So how come we can do every single thing that we know, have a great routine and really habitual spiritual practice that has, you know, helped us before, but how come we feel like we're at a standstill? How can we still feel stuck? And what truly can be the cause of staying where we are, even though we're giving our best, we're reading all the books and the power of now and mindfulness and everything in between, it feels like we know it all. So how come we're not there yet? What I want to share is that I have felt the same way before. I have read one point in time, all these positive thinking, positive lifestyle blogs, and I really enjoyed these articles. I really enjoyed all these ideas of how to be our true self. And I honestly felt like I got it. I thought I understood what was happening. I understood how our thoughts work, how they impact us. I thought I understood. But to an extent, there was still a huge blind spot within myself that I didn't address. And as many of you know, and those of you who are in the Facebook group or those of you who have been listening to this podcast for a long time, you know that the first time I ever reached out to someone for help professionally was for my immense guilt that I felt. I would feel guilty for the smallest things and even years later, I would still be stuck on feeling bad about a silly, silly little thing that I did that no one actually cared about but myself. Now, to bring it back to all the positivity blogs and books and all that I've been doing, all this spiritual work along the way, did they help? Yes, definitely, but only to an extent. Now, how I wish to explain this is in a really simple saying, which I really resonate with, so I hope that it helps you too. And it goes something like, what brought you here doesn't necessarily bring you there. And to me, this really resonates with another concept, which is the level in which the problem was created is not the level in which the solution resides. 
So what I'm really trying to get across here is that sometimes we have really deep rooted wounds or traumas or patterns that are just within our body, within our muscles, within our daily life that we barely even see it or even notice it anymore. And when we have a certain mindfulness practice, meditation or a healthy, clean, you know, soulful lifestyle, it's definitely helpful because it allows us to see more clearly, allows us to feel more of what's going on within. But I know, I know what I felt before, which was the biggest pains and the biggest issues in my life. Honestly, I didn't really want to digest it or resolve them or to even face them because I knew that it was going to be painful and I knew that it was going to be hard. So I did the best I can and could at the time to push it away, to read as many spiritual books as I can and to feel like I get it, which I did only to the level of my mind. I understood it from my head. It was reasonable. I got it. But did I embody it? No. That's why there was this struggle within my life. Even though I felt like I understood and I got it all, I didn't because I wasn't actually embodying it. I wasn't living it fully. So what does it take to actually embody that unconditional love to yourself? What does it take to be connected to yourself and be so strongly and confidently you that it doesn't matter what others say and you're not persuaded by your environment, by your circumstances to be someone else who you're not? What worked for me and what I'm every single day supporting women all over the world, not only in my free Facebook group, but also my clients, is to have experiences. An experience where they feel truly within that unconditional love. Or to fully have an experience where that trauma, that wound, that past, that person, that hurt, no longer has power over you. You can read as many books, go to as many retreats as you wish, but unless you fully face full on what is truly there blocking you, it is very unlikely that I would say impossible to move on or to step up to the next level. That's why we feel stuck sometimes. That's why we feel like we are at a standstill, even though we feel like we're doing everything in our power to grow, to transform, to take our love, take our self-expression, take our intuition, everything to the next level. We can't unless we open ourselves up to another level of feeling, another experience, somewhere we've never gone before. Because I know that for, you know, spiritual practice at the beginning when you start yoga, it's uncomfortable. It's just like, oh my goodness, what is this muscle I'm stretching? What is going on? And what am I doing to my body? And why do I look like a pretzel? <laughs> but, you know, as you start meditation at the beginning, you're like, okay, you're getting used to it. You're wondering, what the heck am I doing? Am I even doing this correctly? But over time, it gets easier, right? You get used to it. And that's exactly it. You get so used to it that it's a great habit and a great, you know, routine and ritual to have in your life. But can we still depend on that easy, easy, comfortable way to dive into ourselves? Because once we're comfortable, that means that there could be another layer that's underneath what we're currently doing, feeling, and experiencing. And that's where even the greater potential, greater resource, and where that greater healing lies. And I know it can be totally, totally, totally scary. I get it completely because I know I was freaked out. I was scared. I was insecure. I was very suspicious when I went to my first hypnotherapy session thinking, seriously, can anyone help me? No one understands my problems, plus uh, do I really have a problem? What I want to say is that it's not an issue-based thing. What I really want to offer you here and what I really invite you to do this week is to open up to another level of yourself. If there are these emotions, if there are certain things of the past, which you know, you deep down know you're suppressing, you deep down know you're not fully accepting and embracing and digesting and processing, then that is 
where the freedom to be who you are, the freedom to live the life that you want and to take everything to the next level, that's where it resides. Because that is the place that we haven't gone yet. And that's a place where when we have courage and we open ourselves up to see it, it will no longer have power over us. Now, the best way to go about doing this is to share with someone who has been there and also to share in a space where you are held with unconditional love, with acceptance, and with someone who can ask the right questions to bring you that clarity of, okay, if this is what is happening, where can we go next? What is possible from here? Because the idea is not to dwell in the past, in our trauma, in our wounds, and to make it worse and to relive it. Nothing like that at all. What I'm saying is that if there is something that's still sticking, something that is still kind of at the back of our mind and we haven't fully let go yet, some place we've been ignoring and suppressing this whole time, then if you want to break free from where you are right now, then that is the key to face it and to do it. And I promise once you do that, things will flow again. That resistance, that stagnation, that standstill will end. Then you will begin to flow again. Things will feel easier. And it's just so beautiful to witness in my clients. Just the other day, I'm always amazed by the power of healing within each individual. I had a client and we saw each other for one session. And it was a session where there was this huge battle between the ego, whether to listen to that or not, and the self-protection and defensive mechanism to the other part of her, which is this very intuitive, flowing, really giving yet powerful side. And there was this tug of war between that and this and that and this and who should I listen to? And there was quite a bit of struggle because that ego was very loud and it felt like a lot of effort to be able to listen to that feminine wisdom within. One week later, we were scheduled for our second call and it was unbelievable to witness a sister in her full power because she showed up, she told me about the progress she made for her work and it was incredible because it no longer felt like work, it just flowed and she was just so guided from within her to make all the right decisions, all the right choices, she was ready to take it slow and let things unfold to let things unfold the way they should. And it was the most beautiful thing to witness. And she said one sentence that so touched me to my core. She said, I have never felt so calm and connected to myself ever in my life before. Those words were so powerful and I could barely, barely believe that we've only had one coaching session together. I'm not trying to advertise my coaching here. What I'm trying to describe to you is what is possible within you too. Because out of all the clients I've ever had, yes, every single sister, every single woman is magical. She has her own spark. She has her own uniqueness. And so do you. But do they all have something, some magic pill or some kind of secret sauce that you don't have? No, they are all the same in that they are all women, they are all strong, they are all determined, and they know that there's something bigger within them. They have had a taste of who they truly are, and they are ready to flow and with ease and easily, very, very, extremely quickly get the results and reach that place within that is peaceful, that is calm, that is powerful. What I want to describe to you today is that even though you may have a very powerful spiritual practice, even though you have everything going on and you're doing everything you can in order to connect with yourself, unless you connect with that one part of you, which you have been neglecting, that one part of you, which is the scariest to feel, unless you go there, there will be stagnation, there will be resistance, and it'll make life a lot harder. All these success stories of the sisters I have shared, 
There is nothing special in it except that I am showing up with love. I am showing up with my own tuition and they are showing up fully for themselves and taking the steps, nothing crazy, nothing secret, but taking the steps and giving it the time and effort it takes and the patience to actually face it together with me. I want to end this episode with this. You have everything you need to reach and to be who you wish to be. All that potential, all your dreams, if you can think it, it is possible for you. And never ever feel like you gotta do this on your own. And never ever feel like that other sisters I have worked with have something magical that you don't have. Trust me, you are as capable to be who you are. You are as capable to loving yourself. And you are as capable of healing as anyone in my life I have ever met or worked with. You have everything you need. Sometimes we need to just reach out because there are blind spots. I have them too. I go to healing. I talk things out. I go for detox. I have my own practice to make sure that I stay who I am and that I am pure and I am clear so I can show up as best I can for you. So don't ever hesitate and don't ever feel like that you are missing anything. If you feel like there are some sticky spots in your life, if you feel like there's something you're resisting and something that you're not facing, well, let's do this together. You do not have to live in fear of worry, of doubt. Past does not have power over you. So let's do this together and I promise you that everything you ever dreamed of, it is possible. So if you want to get clarity on what is it that you're seriously stuck with right now and how to go about unlocking and breaking yourself from that kind of pattern, then feel free to head over to femininespace.com forward slash face it and you can there schedule for a free soul dive clarity call because sometimes all we need is clarity. All we need is to see things from a slightly different perspective and you're already on your way. So I'm wishing you so much love. I'm in tropical, hot, damp Kuala Lumpur for the next while still, but I'm wishing you a wonderful, wonderful week. If you've got any questions or if you want more support, feel free to head over to femininetribe.com where I do my free trainings three days a week and where I answer your questions so that you can move ahead and grow into the beautiful, beautiful goddess who you are. But let's not forget to keep being who we are and loving it. Until next week. Oh, did you want more? For free live trainings and other exclusive resources, join the Facebook sisterhood over at femininetribe.com. Just request access and see you there.